I wanted to get started on uh, a 630 meter station here at WU2D. I uh, went ahead and got my permission to transmit from the Power Authority. And uh, promptly uh, built up a transmitter and uh, did nothing with it for two years. It's time to actually do something with 630 meters. Now the loop antenna project that I recently completed, you might have followed the loop uh, series or the loop amplifier series. Um, I've got a receiving station that I'm very confident in. Turns out that uh, on this band you can use some pretty simple equipment too. A regenerative receiver on 630 meters, you know, between 472 and 476, uh, 470 range um, works very well. And you'll find that uh, the coil will only be a little bit bigger than this for 630 meters. So maybe you want to go simple with a regenerative receiver. Old fashioned, old school. Uh, on the transmit side you can go pretty simple as well. A simple two or three tube transmitter or two or three transistor transmitter will get you on the air quite easily. So uh, the, the biggest thing that drives people away from this band is the reception of noise and how to combat noise on the receive end and the oversized antenna that you need to uh, put out an efficient signal. So uh, fortunately the way that they've uh, made the rules it's your effective radiated power that's important. The power uh, that has to do with uh, the efficiency of your antenna. So in order to achieve the 5 watt limit you might have to um, use a 100 watt transmitter but a trans but a uh, antenna that's only 5 percent efficient that kind of thing. So I've got uh, this antenna tuner that was just donated to me that's the low frequency variometer and antenna tuner used with the ART-13 in the B-24 and B-17 bombers in World War II and has quite an impressive coil. Now I'm not actually going to use this as a permanent solution to transmitting or tuning an antenna for 630 meters but I'm going to use it to find out what inductance I need to resonate the wire then I will replace this with a low loss type coil. But this is going to be a piece of test equipment to figure out how to resonate a wire. The other thing that's very exciting about this band is there's an anniversary coming up that is the transatlantic uh, Marconi transmission in December uh, 1901. The anniversary of that's coming up and there's going to be a lot of activity uh, on that night on, on uh, the low portion of 630 meters uh, look from 472 to about 474, 475 uh, kilohertz and uh, you'll be able to hear good old CW on the band. So there is no strict band allocation for the uh, for the 630 meter band. It all could be used for CW, for instance. But uh, a gentleman's agreement is that uh, above 475 kilohertz, uh, the digital modes, uh, uh, the modes that operate at or below the noise threshold, you know, uh, WSPR, uh, JT9, that kind of thing, uh, all, all of the digital modes are toward the top of the band, and traditional CW on the bottom of the band. And I think uh, uh, being an old buzzard type uh, channel we're going to concentrate on CW to start with and uh, develop a receiving system, an antenna system, and a transmitting system that we can home brew. Hope you enjoy this video series on getting on 630 meters uh, in a retro style ham station.
said, is it better to get the virus than get vaccines? I got vaccinated. I got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I got the booster five weeks ago. Went to Costco. Okay, so what we're looking at is a little regenerative receiver. It's a two-tuber, 12AU7 with a 12AQ5 output tube. Let's take a peek. We can look in there and we can see we've got the 12AU7 and the uh, 12AQ5. That's why it's able to drive a speaker. And, uh, you know, people have been saying, hey, of course you can pick up 630 meter stations with that very fancy receiver you've got. You know, what about me? I, I don't have money to buy a receiver like that. What kind of receiver could I use? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ordinary 2-tube regen and see if we can't pick up 630 meter CW just as good as the Watkins Johnson. And all I'm going to do is add one capacitor across the main tuning capacitor. So let's try it. Okay, I've just added a capacitor right here. That is a 470 picofarad postage stamp mica capacitor across the 365 puff tuning capacitor. So I wonder if this has gotten us low enough to get us down to 472 kilohertz. Remember the bottom of the AM band is 550. We don't need to go too far lower than that to get to 630 meters. So uh, the way we're going to find that out is we're going to turn the other receiver on, put this thing into regeneration and see if we can hear the Spot signal. Okay, let's turn on the regen. Let's turn up the regeneration. Okay, the regen is oscillating. It's putting a little note into the big receiver. So now we've found 472 kilohertz on the regen. Not bad, coming in on the little two-tube regen. So, uh, who says you need to use a fancy receiver when you can just do it with a two-tube regen? So, uh, pretty impressive for a little 2-tube uh, regen, and that's really not the best topology for a regen. There are much better circuits out there using the Hartley regenerative circuit and uh, pentodes. Uh, but I just wanted to show you a very basic receiver that could be uh, brought down in frequency. Let's talk about transmitters a little bit. Um, if you want to stick with vacuum tube transmitters, 630 meters is a perfect band for that. Um, now a VXO idea is a great idea and I'm actually using a VXO transmitter uh, in my station but you can do it with an old-fashioned VFO. Here's an exciter out of the uh, 1944 uh, radio handbook and uh, as you can see they just have a simple Hartley oscillator driving a buffer stage that just has uh, broad tuning on the plate into the final. And uh, with this uh, exciter VFO, they could get 25 watts out. Now if we use some more modern tubes like a 5763 or a 6CL6 or a 12BY7 in the oscillator and buffer, 
uh, and then put something like a 6146 in the final, or maybe a sweep tube, um, we can uh, probably bring the voltage up on the final and easily get 50 watts out of a simple VFO exciter. So these are just some ideas I wanted to throw at you. Uh, you don't have to do solid state. You don't have to do class E. You can do it with old-fashioned tube technology and have a lot of fun on 630 meters. So of course it's easier, cheaper, and uh, probably more efficient to get on the air with solid state equipment. I just wanted to introduce you to the idea that uh, the, the tube type equipment, the retro type equipment, probably works better at these lower frequencies. There's less problem with drift, the tubes operate very efficiently down there, especially the audio tubes, and many times you can get away with just a couple of tubes in the transmitter, a couple of tubes in the receiver, and you've got a station. Let's call it a junk box station, whatever. In the uh, next video, I'm going to get into the design of my homebrew transmitter for 630 meters. And it's a full function transmitter for CW on both the 630 and the 2200 meter band. And it uses 10 vacuum tubes. So stand by for part two of my 630 meter adventure.